Virtual and augmented reality introduce a fundamental shift in understanding user experience. Our next speaker is CEO and founder of VR analytics company Cognitive VR. Tony Bevilacqua will discuss some of the challenges faced in virtual and augmented reality and how new approaches to analytics and data acquisition can be used to address emerging optimization needs. Please join me in welcoming Tony to the stage. All right, good afternoon. My name is uh, Tony Bevilacqua. I'm founder and CEO of um, uh, Cognitive VR. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, user experience um, and um, analytics and some of the innovation that we're working on in this particular space. Uh, I started my journey in uh, VR probably some like, uh, similar to some uh, that you have. Uh, so for example, uh, I was back in GDC earlier this year, uh, the year before that as well, and I saw some uh, people that I respected doing some really interesting things in virtual reality. So what did I do? I went out and bought a bunch of headsets, uh, strapped them to my family, and then uh, observed what happened. And what I found was is that, that people were experiencing things unlike anything I've seen in mobile or games, which is really my background, analytics for those particular spaces. People were experiencing things like immersion. People were understanding um, and, and becoming immersed in these experiences and, and experiencing different types of emotions. Um, what we focus on at Cognitive VR is really around uh, this thesis that VR introduces a really a fundamental shift in user experience analytics and that charts and graphs alone are not going to provide you the, uh, the insights that you need to be, be able to understand what's going on inside of your, your virtual or augmented reality experience. Uh, I started off in web, mobile, and, and game analytics. Um, honestly, we had it easy in that space. Uh, in that space, we were looking at activity tracking. We were looking at uh, things like um, you know, event-based telemetry, uh, taking those events, running them through to uh, funnels that were towards certain KPIs, uh, worked on things like uh, user acquisition. But ultimately, what we're looking at now is what we're calling immersive analytics. Right? We're trying to understand levels of immersion. Um, how people are being immersed in our brand or our experience. We're also trying to understand things like user behavior and the emotional response that we're seeing for a particular uh, user experience. So this fundamental shift is really being driven by um, you know, want and need to be able to create immersive experiences for your customers that are contextually relevant and emotionally engaging and the proper emotions, the emotions that you're looking to drive from your particular experience. So the problems that we focus on in VR and augmented reality are really around solving, um, you know, understanding how people are, are un, um, uh, uh, learning your, your experience or, or going through your user experience. So uh, in traditional storytelling, like cinematic storytelling, uh, being able uh, to uh, handle storytelling is really about uh, you're on a track, the user follows that track, the producer is in full control. In VR, it's very different, the, the customer is in full control. Uh, so being able to understand that workflow and how people are moving through those experiences and being able to segment and co cohort that information is very important. Another area that we focus on is really around nausea and comfort. So uh, game companies and entertainment companies are very good at being able to do focus groups, but focus groups become biased very fast in VR. You're talking about people who uh, have already had their VR experience and experienced VR many times. So the question is, how do you understand how somebody that's first trying VR is going to have a, a good experience inside of your, uh, your product or service. So being able to measure uh, discomfort and comfort at scale is very important. Um, this is less of a problem right now, but performance and platform is very important in this particular business. Variance in hardware and variance in gameplay, so you know, different graphics cards, HMD headsets, and so on, interact in different types of ways. And we need to understand how that uh, influences uh, a user's experience and how it may uh, degrade and, and cause issues with um, you know, user's comfort. The other side of it is more user input. In mobile devices and games, you're kind of staring forward. The only inputs that you can do are kind of clicking or tapping on things. In VR and augmented reality, you have multiple controllers at play. You have the user's gaze. You have uh, different types of headset behaviors that are going on. The user is uh, exercising locomotion uh, through the space, and they're also uh, exercising things like room scale as well. Uh, on the AR side, we're trying to avoid the, the AR hellscape. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys saw this video you know, where this, where this woman was being immersed in an uh, AR world and completely bombarded by marketing and advertising content. So the, the question is, how do we provide really contextually relevant content 
How do we measure the response to augmentation? And then how do we uh, demonstrate causality, the link between um, you know, what you're augmenting and uh, the outcome that you're ultimately trying to get to? How do we bring in the, uh, the, the real world aspects of, of information that are happening and um, how uh, the augmentation is, is supplementing that? So the use cases we primarily focus on today around analytics and VR are really around consumer marketing. Uh, so we have people that are interested in doing things like advertising. It's one of the first mediums in the world where you can actually track a user's gaze, understand exactly what they're looking at and how they're engaging with that, with that advertisement. Um, we're seeing more intricate uh, advertising elements as well around things like uh, product placement. And we're seeing the same technology being used across other industries like real estate. So being able to understand how different buyers react to different types of experiences or you know, what features of a particular unbuilt condominium uh, that customer is interested in is a, a very interesting uh, data-enabled use case for VR, AR. Being able to do personalization around training and simulation and augmenting or changing that simulation based off of a user's unique uh, personal input with that scenario is a way that data can be used to enable these types of experiences. So it's really about augmenting workflow, uh, creating different types of collaborative uh, you know, uh, use cases, and then building a personalized user experience uh, based off of that user's inputs. The inputs that are really unique to, uh, to VR for us are really around spatial telemetry, uh, visual engagement, um, hands and controllers, so these things could be like gestures, uh, other types of third-party sensors, so being able to correlate things like heart rate, perspiration, respiration, galvanic skin response, to be able to try to measure uh, the user's emotional state in a more intricate way uh, are some of the capabilities that you can add in correlation uh, with the data that you're seeing um, uh, you, you know, from visual telemetry or other types of event-based telemetry. Um, UX is massively important for VR and AR, directing the user's focus by leveraging some of these techniques is uh, one of the ways we can build better user experiences for our, for our customers. What we focus on as a company is really around vision tracking within the virtual world. So we provide uh, the ability to monitor what people are looking at, both on kind of a spatial perspective uh, throughout the entire scene. We also provide them uh, the capability to aggregate that into heat maps so you can understand how people are engaging with your scene, uh, do segmentation, cohorting against that, to try to understand if there's uh, insights or hypotheses that you can use to build a better user experience. The second piece of that is really using tools like A-B testing, personalization, things that have really been proved out in mobile and games, um, and, and being able to uh, you know, use the visual telemetry to build um, and, and uh, build more personal experiences for your customers. Being able, being able to leverage that data also to build new types of business models is also incredibly important. So in the advertising use case, you know, being able to use visual telemetry to demonstrate ROI or demonstrate engagement with advertising is incredibly powerful. The things that we're focused on in the future are really around how can we measure uh, visual engagement with the headsets that we have um, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, currently distributed in the market. How can I understand uh, if my co uh, customers are happy, sad, angry, stressed, and so on? And how can we incorporate different types of physical sensors or hopefully have the HMDs add additional sensors so we can understand these in more meaningful ways? Uh, also leveraging our technology to be able to use uh, computer vision to be able to understand um, you know, contextual relevance inside the real world to the, to the elements that are being rendered inside of augmented reality. Um, just a quick uh, plug for what we're doing. Uh, we have a, a VR analytics platform that is currently being distributed today. It's a two-minute install, uh, free SDK, uh, works with Unity, and you can get started at cognitivevr.co slash quickstart. Um, we also have a uh, demo that's available over in our booth, uh, which is on HTC Vive. You can actually try the visual telemetry there. Thank you.